The Panos Scordi Encounter. Hi, this is Panos here with David Ravel to tackle challenges in passing the probability exam known as subject P. David is an expert in this subject and his details will be included in the description. Welcome, David. Thank you, thank you for having me. So can I start off by asking you, what is subject P? So P is an exam that many people take first. Uh, it's P stands for probability. And it's basically going through the basic one-dimensional and two-dimensional probability things in both discrete and continuous settings that the societies feel that you need to know to be an actuary. Is P considered a hard exam? Well, that's kind of an interesting question. I think it depends on your background. For people who are current math majors, or I guess really anyone who's sort of familiar with calculus, it's considered to be relatively easy. Uh, P, FM, and IFM are probably considered to be the three quote easy actual exams, which doesn't mean that they're easy. I mean, the pass rate I think on P is around 42%. So most people who take it don't pass, uh, but you know, compared to some of the other exams, it's relatively easy if you have that calculus background. People who are career changers and have more of a finance background and less of a calculus background, I think struggle with the exam a little bit more. And so for them, I would say it's harder than you know, FM and the other exams I mentioned. Is it a computer-based exam or traditional paper and pencil? Within the United States, you have to do it in a computer-based format. There are some countries where there aren't a lot of computer-based testing centers. And so there are some countries where every other sitting you have an opportunity to do it as a paper and pencil. Uh, but within the United States, where the majority of people who take the exam are, uh, it is computer-based. And I think that's actually quite helpful in terms of your strategy of how you approach the exam. But maybe we'll talk about that later on. Okay. Um, so where do students actually take the exam? So the exam is administered um, by a company called Prometric, which is a big specialist in giving computer-based testing exams. So you register through the SOA, and then they give you a link to then you go off and register with Prometric, which you should probably do almost right away so you can get a good time slot. And then you go to this other computer testing center where it's purely just basically like a proctoring center and you sit down in your booth with potentially sound covering headphones on and you take your exam for three hours. The person sitting next to you might be taking the MCAT or some completely different unrelated exam. And so the fact that they're typing away at the computer frantically shouldn't disturb you. It has nothing to do with you know, the material that's on your exam itself. I think that anything you can do to lower your stress level for P makes sense. You know, it's important to get a good night's sleep the night before. Uh, some people like to go and actually visit their testing center or drive by their testing center the day before, just so they know how long it takes to get there, where to park and all those sorts of things. So on the actual day, you have fewer jitters. And I think that makes a lot of sense. How often is the exam offered? It's given every two months. So every odd month, January, March, and so on. Uh, how, how long is the duration of the exam? It's a three hour, 30 question exam. So on average, you have about six minutes per problem as you're going through the exam. So I think when you're practicing for the exam and studying for the exam, it's useful sometimes to keep track of how long it takes you to do different problems. I think that can affect your strategy as you're actually doing the exam questions themselves. Uh, does the, do the amount of questions ever vary on the exams or it's always the same amount? No, everyone always gets 30 questions. Um, some people, some students come across descriptions talking about how some of the questions are quote pilot questions and other questions are live questions. Uh, that the pilot questions are questions that they're sort of testing for future use and aren't gonna be scored, only the, the live questions are scored. And that's something that people aren't used to hearing about, but it's actually quite common in computer-based testing. And it's something that from your strategy point of view, you should completely ignore. So you should pretend I just didn't make this digression talking about pilot questions. When you're actually taking the exam itself, all of the questions look exactly the same and you should treat them all as if they count one worth one point. And they're all multiple choice questions as well. How is the exam scored? So each question is worth the same. 
And so it's purely how many questions out of the 30 did you get right? There are multiple choice questions. There is no penalty for guessing. So you should answer every single question. And typically the pass mark has been slowly inching up over the past few years. It's currently around 70, 71% on average. How, how quickly after you take the exam uh, will you find out if you've passed? That actually just changed within the last couple of weeks. So uh, it used to be that they would display on the screen as soon as the exam was done, a screen saying a preliminary analysis of your exam has shown that you passed or failed. And then you would get a printout giving you the information as well. They just within the last sitting changed to having that be email. So you no longer see that while you're physically in the exam room. And instead you get an email, maybe by the time you get to your car two minutes later, some people have seen they get it eight hours later. You know, it can vary slightly. The length of time it takes to get that email doesn't seem to be related to whether or not you passed. So you shouldn't get nervous just because you don't get an email within two minutes. You know, it could take a couple of hours. In a typical exam sitting, how many uh, students or what's the percentage of students that you would expect to see pass? So I think the most recent sittings, the passing rate has been around 42%. Uh, I think part of why I mentioned that the percentage that you have to get right has been creeping up. It used to be around 62, 63%, and now it's closer to 70. The SOA denies this, and they say it's you know, just based on sort of official trying to keep everything uniform, but it also seems to partially do that so that the passing rate seems to be about 42%-ish past the exam each sitting. So... Let's see. Um, it seems that it's a little bit lower than uh, at the FM exam. I think FM exam is slightly higher than that, but that's, uh, uh, I guess, a lot of it's to do with your preparation as, as well. But if a student yeah. fails the exam, uh, must they wait a certain amount of time before they can retake it? So in theory, you can retake it the next sitting. And also the SOA only publishes the names of people who pass. So in theory, you could take the exam five times and you're the only person who knew, knows that you took it five times. So if you fail four times and pass, the only person who knows that is you. Um, the only downside to try and take it the, two months later is oftentimes registration for one sitting starts before you, the previous sitting has happened. And so you might be in a situation where the registration starts before you take the exam. And so it might be a little bit difficult to get a good time slot you know, for those exam sitting two months out. But in theory, you could do it every two months. And I think if you're really close to passing and you just need a little bit more extra, it makes sense probably to retake it as quickly as you can while everything is still fresh in your mind. Is there a maximum number of times a student can take the exam? No. Some employers will have maximum number of times that their employees can take exams and will pay for those. Uh, people taking P typically don't have a job yet in the actuarial world. And so for them, you know, there's just, it costs you $250 each time you take it. So, you know, the only downside to taking it several times is the financial cost and your time. Uh, you know, hopefully though, if you have sort of a good coordinated study plan, you don't have to take the exam over and over and over again. You know, I, mean, I think it's unusual for people to have to take it more than two or three times. So would you take P before FM? Well, I think it depends a little bit on your background. I mean, so P is much more calculus heavy than FM. So if you don't feel like you have that strong calculus background, I think it makes sense to take FM first. So people who are career changers who have been away from math for 10 years, I often encourage them to take FM first. If you're a current math major and you've got that calculus fresh in your mind, I don't think it makes much difference. And I think maybe even there, it might make some sense to take P first. Um, I would still take both P and FM before I would take IFM. So um, is it true to say that the SOA and the CAS uh, both have exam P, but it's administered with the SOA? Right, they used to work jointly together and there used to be a joint collaboration to administer it by both of them. Uh, then the SOA pulled out of that collaboration. So now the SOA still does all the writing of the questions. And then you know, logistically it's administered through this company, Prometric. 
and the CAS gives credit for what you did. So at some point along the time, you have to send the CAS an email saying, here's my transcript of the SOA exams I passed, and then they'll automatically give you credit for it. I think they call it course one instead of exam P or something, but you know, it's, it's a one-to-one -one credit situation. Once a student decides to take exam P, where can they get the study material from? Well, you know, that's sort of an interesting question given that I sell study material. Um, there are a number of choices you can have, right? The simplest thing to do is if you just Google SOA exam P and you can go to the SOA's website where they have a syllabus and they have a bunch of old sample problems, or, you know, over 300 problems from old past exams. And so that certainly is one option. Uh, there are also a number of actuarial bookstores, you know, literally something called the actuarialbookstore.com. And they'll sell things from basically everybody who makes actuarial study materials. I work for a company called the Infinite Actuary. We are the oldest provider of online video seminars. And then for exam P, in addition to selling a video seminar where I go through the material lesson by lesson and breaking out all the different topics, and reviewing calculus as you need the calculus, uh, we also have some free sample exams for exam P that a number of people I've seen have commented they feel are very close to the difficulty to the actual exam. And so for just for free by creating an account, you can go through those four sample exams in a CPT format. I think it's useful to go through a CPT format and actually practice working on that because there are some things strategy wise, I think being familiar with the way that the questions appear on the screen uh, can be helpful. Are students allowed to use calculators during the exam? Yes. And uh, the calculator that you want to use is this thing. It's a TI-30XS multi-view. In some countries, the S stands for solar. So in some countries, you get the TI-30XB. In Southeast Asia, for example, it's, they sell the battery version instead of the solar version. It's about $18 and is, for P, by far the best of the calculators that they allow on their exam. It has a data entry table where you can almost use as a miniature three column spreadsheet that lets you solve a lot of the problems that used to be quite hard are now turned into something you just type a couple of buttons on the calculator and they can actually answer the question for you. So are students allowed anything else apart from the calculator such as Excel sheets, sheet sheets or formula no. sheets? No. And at Prometric, they have a pretty, because you know, they're very used to administering and proctoring exams from all across the spectrum. You know, they're very strict about what they let you into the exam. So they're not gonna let you in with you know, all sorts of other things. I think they even make you check your phone in the locker these days, but I'm not positive. What is the registration process? So it's a two-step process. The first thing you do is you go to the SOA's website. Uh, the easiest way, instead of trying to write out a big link is just literally Google SOA exam P. And on their website, they have a link to register for the exam. After you have registered for the exam, they will send you an, a confirmation email. And that confirmation email gives you a link that you have to click. I would click it right away. I'm a procrastinator, but a lot of people who take actual exams are not. And so you want to click that link that they send you for registr registration as soon as you can, because there are only so many time slots available at these testing centers. And so after you get your registration email from the SOA, you go to the Prometric website and you can choose an actual time slot. Um, their Prometric, depending on where you live, can often have a lot of different centers. So there's some big cities where they have three or four different locations. If you register early, you can choose the location you want, on the day you want, at the time of time of day you want. Otherwise, it's a two week exam window and you're doing it on nine o'clock on a Thursday that you just don't wanna be you know, taking the exam on or whatever time it doesn't work for you. You mentioned earlier the cost of taking the exam. Was that $250? I think it's $250. Yeah. This is the end of part one on tackling challenges surrounding the P exam. Part two will follow shortly. Thanks, David. David's contact details will be included in the description. This is your host, Panos Skordi, on the Panos Skordi Encounter. Take care wherever you are.